Hello, this is John Zyler from uh, Home Server Show Podcast. I'm with uh, Tim DeLeo from Using Windows Home Server, and we're going to try some Veil stuff uh, today with the uh, remote uh, desktop, remote access. So, uh, Tim, what do, what's the plans for today? Uh, what we're doing today is that uh, John and I are using Skype to talk to each other, and he's using Windows Remote Assistance to view my desktop. What we're then going to do is do a remote desktop to my recently installed Veil server, and we're going to do the initial setup steps so you can see what's required to get your Veil server up and running. Sure, so how's it been going with, uh, have you did, done a few tests already with the, the remote, remote access? All you need to do to access remote desktop connection is type in the name of the Veil server that you put in. Now for me, I typed in Veil server because that's the name. Once you've typed in the name, click on connect it will initiate the connection and it will log you in. Now it will ask you for your username and password, so type in administrator and the password that you entered during the initial setup. You can see now on the screen that I have accessed the Veil server desktop. You can see that I have a recycle bin icon and a dashboard icon. Now it's possible if you've done your Veil server recently that you may have some updates to do or you may have to enter a product key. We have skipped those steps, and today we'll show you the initial setup after updates and product key activation. Now that the remote desktop connection has been established, I'm going to let John take over, and he and I will walk you through the initial settings for Veil Home Server. John? Okay, Tim, let's see what you got now, because my I've been having problems with mine, so hopefully your connection is going to go uh, uh, a lot better with your ISP. So right now we're going to open up uh, Dashboard. Okay, Dashboard being the new version of the console we're familiar with. Yep, they decided to give it a different name, so... You know, I love the new interface. It has such a Windows 7 feel to it. Yeah, yeah, it's clean. I mean, it's it's still the beta, so like uh, a few guys, like Andrew was also mentioning there that the... Uh, That's Andrew I Edney? Meant, yeah, Andrew Edney from uh, your, your show there, uh, using Windows Home Server. Uh, he was saying that, uh, you know, that's it. They'll probably clean it up and make it a little bit more graphics, a little bit of more splash and stuff eventually. That, that's what I see. But for now, it's they just want us to test the basics. So let's see what we go. So now we got the uh, um, um, complete to tasks to complete. So we're going to do the setup remote access. Okay, this is the first time that we've done this. So for those of you watching the home game, uh, this will be exactly what you see as you do your initial... Windows Home Server codename Veil setup. Yeah, so one of the options is uh, you can select down here where it says skip router setup. I want to set it up the router manually. But we're going to try and do the automatic and see if Windows is going to find your router and, uh, and all that stuff. So we'll click on next. Setting up internet connecting, connectivity. Okay, for those of you at home, you may see the screen flicker because I will be blocking out any of my IP addresses and MAC addresses. Uh, but otherwise it will walk you through all of the steps and if you have a router that supports universal plug and play this step should go through rather smoothly setting up the router Because generally, the way uh, Windows Home Server sets up the remote access, it uh, has to port forward port 80, port 443, and 4125. So port 80 is your, your regular uh, HTTP uh, port. Uh, 443 is the HTTPS, which is the secure port. And 4125, I think that's the remote access uh, to give commands back and forth. So now it's verifying. Right, and this is where Jim said it borked his network up, correct? Because he had multiple servers on his network? Yeah, he was uh, he was having an issue. That's it. I mean, Microsoft uh, was saying when they did the release notes, there's a lot, long list of, you know, problems that could be, you know, could be, you people could have with their installation. So who knows if this is one of the things that, because, uh, you know, once he set it up, then he went to his other laptops and desktops and he's able to see, hey, wait a minute, these guys, uh, you know, got kicked off the, the network. 
But if you're just doing this by yourself and you don't, you know, you're not referring to your other PCs, you might not even know that they got disconnected from the internet or what. So uh, this is important to check all those options. Okay, well, we're still talking over Skype, so my network must be up and running. Yeah. Okay, so if you'd like to continue through. So that's it. Now we got, so at least we got a green check mark here, and it says uh, set up your domain name. So we'll click on that one. Okay, next. Okay, I want to use a name or an existing one. So I can click there, and can you take over and type yes. in your stuff? Yes, so those of you who are going to see just a blank as we go through this. Okay, so one of the things we're going to do now is uh, you were, we're going to, by default, we're going to use the uh, Windows Live account setup because when you buy a uh, Windows Home Server, uh, they allow you to use the homeserver.com domain name. So uh, to uh, apply the server name that you want to use now to that account, you have to go through this screen and you have to type in your, your uh, login name for your Windows Live account and your password. So we're going to do that. Okay, let me type it in. We'll be right back. Okay, so I guess now Microsoft will verify those credentials. Usually my router has a bit of problem setting this up. So sometimes uh, some routers that include universal plug and play, they don't exactly, I don't know, talk nicely, let's say, to uh, to this application. So if it does, if things don't work out, then at least you have an option where you can set it up manually. So if this fails, then we'll look at that option. Yes, I'm currently running a D-Link DIR-655, uh, and this is my third home server that I have on the network. So uh, you may have a little bit more uh, of a complex issue uh, if you're like John and I, where you have two or three servers running on your network. Yeah, the the D, uh, D-Link uh, DIR-655, that's a really good router. That's a very popular one, so uh, it's one of the recommended ones. So hopefully this will go nice and smooth. Okay, John and I just finished. We ran remote access setup a second time, and we got the remote access set up. Uh, because this is a beta installation of Windows Home Server, chances are it's not your primary server, so you may have to run remote access setup more than once. Uh, I'm blocking right now my IP address and my domain name, uh, but the remote access was set up correctly. Yeah, that's good. It says remote access available. Let me tell you, I don't get that on my server. It's always uh, grayed out. Or it always says not available. That's what it says. 